Okay, on site. Rain's got a break in the rain here for a minute. We might pound a post. We got a nice little 24 panel ground mount facing south perfectly. Sometimes it's just so nice to show up and get our south is also level. We're level within probably a few inches, which is great. So we'll see how we're gonna pound. This is what was an old driveway bed, the customer said. So hopefully we'll break through that easily and keep going. So three posts, 24 panels, cantilevers and all that. So it's not too bad since the rain would hold off. We'll get, uh, we'll get going here. So this is an end phase job, panels on there. And we weren't, we can't even contemplate not working in the rain. So we're only about 90, I think we're about 90 feet. We're gonna put a two inch conduit, which is really overkill. I know it's expensive, but that's what we had. Makes it easy to expand if you ever wanted to. And then uh, I'll show you later on the meter base location, the combiner location. Um, inside we're gonna run Romex 12.4, or 12.4 in one shot that makes it really easy to get from one end of this house to the other uh, to carry our current from this array so all right we're about to get started Wes is getting we just kind of we shoot for a uh, six feet 72 inches on the post see how it goes and make adjustments if we have to I hope we get all these in without having to cut grind dig whatever that's the plan. Let's get going. Let's warm this baby up. Um, I've been uh, talking to Sinclair about uh, possibly getting a driver next year for my skid steer. Because I know this hammer is a 500 foot-pound hammer, this Rambo. And the skid steer ones that they have are 750, I believe. So it'll make a world of difference. It's just been a... It'll be a bummer having to bring multiple machines when I can do it all with been able to do everything with the mini but wah wah first world probs all right well we're down in the basement and we are going to this is one panel does the whole house so we're gonna put our back feed breaker in here it's a small array and so we won't have to derate this breaker we, and there's a free there's like a dryer that's not being used we're gonna pop a a 40 amp breaker in there go out to our combiner out there with a disconnect we'll work through the band get back and forth so willis is drilling we're going to head this way with our 12-4 we're going to bring it through here through the band into the envoy the combiner not the envoy the combiner that has the envoy in it and then through a disco and then back into here so the only reason we have to go outside, of course, code compliance and uh, disconnect, lever disconnect within line of sight of the meter. And the Envoy will be out there. We were going to put the Envoy out at the array, but Wi-Fi signal would dictate otherwise. So we'll be landing a breaker. And that's pretty much it. We go from the, the ground mount. We put our microinverters on the ground mount. We conduit about 90 feet to the house, to the end of this basement. And then we transition. So we're going to have two transitions, one at the array and one here with this uh, Romex. And that is it. Well, we still got to do the work. But um, anyway, I'm not an end phase expert. Willis has done like 100 of them. So I'm the lackey on this job. He's the boss. All right, we're pounding posts. We've got three posts to put in. It's a small job for us, but uh, so far so good. Uh, 160 inch layout and then a 202 and we keep going this is uh, 20 12 panels in a row so uh, 24 panels total and here we go so hold your ears everybody's got ear protection I'm trying some noise canceling headphones today they're working really good kind of fun so if we can get uh, get these posts in we can get this built get the solar panels put on and then I can take that trailer home and then uh, so we're doing the trailer relay these days but it's working really well now that I can take everything home into the service body truck so all right let's finish this up just got like six inches left to go all right we are 
Just validating the trench depth here for inspection. So we are 20, 20 inches above trench, 20 inches above, 20 to 21 inches above the conduit. Okay, all the way, pretty much the same depth. So minimum, minimum is 18. So we'll go ahead and backfill it. We are a good. Check it in one more spot. It's not quite sitting at the bottom, but I'm a good 20 inches there as well. Okay, so plenty deep, almost yeesh, three feet there. All right, hope that's good enough for inspection. Okay, I didn't do any videoing today. A little end of day filming. We um, always see the dirt spot where we put the trench in. That's pretty much cleaned up, and I just gotta finish raking so that that all looks like that. So I'm very particular about my raking. Everybody just, they just run away when I put the rake in my hand. They just don't get it. I'm a little psychotic when it comes to raking. It's just a thing. <laughs> but anyway, this 24 panel mount has been giving me fits. Just weird stuff. I'm not used to doing end phase. And then uh, with these Canadian solar bifacials, I'm like, oh no, we got these short jumpers that won't reach the microinverter. So now I've either got to attach, that could be 48 jumpers I got to make tomorrow. That's just wonderful. That burns up endless MC4 connectors, so in time. So that was bad planning on my part. I'm just not used to microinverters. These jumpers are fantastic when you're just doing DC, but. End phase, I am, anyway, that was oversight on my part. Um, so, you ever run into that with these uh, panels, doing an end phase job? It's not our typical job. So, anyway, if you don't do it every day, you run into things that just bite you. And so, anyway, we're getting ready to, we pulled our wire in here. We got some, uh, I had some, I had a lot of scrap number eight, so we just used eight. And we're going to make a junction in here from the Q cable. There's our in-phase micros. Here's our bunches of Q cable. And, uh, and we'll make a connections in there. And we'll run two circuits into that box right there. And then we hook up with our Romex going through the garage, a 12-2-2. And have our two circuits and we'll have our ground. And then the, the uh, combiner and everything is over there. And I'll show you that tomorrow. Anyway, we did pretty good today. Yesterday was a rain out. But um, we'll build this tomorrow. Pull the panels up. And start figuring out how to minimize the jumpers. You ever run into that? Oh, well. But anyway, finally cleared out. It was a beautiful, cold, good working day. Good day to rake. Anybody else like raking? And here's where we're going to mount the end phase combiner and disconnect. So we've got, I'm just going to do one inch PVC. I already got the holes bored through the band, through the brick and in the band. Love that core bit. And there's the combiner, the disconnect, and uh, whatever fittings we need to basically take the circuit from the solar. We're bringing it down through the ceiling, out into... The combiner, I have some 8.3 somewhere, that my 8.3 Romex into uh, the disconnect. Uh, the Romex will come into the combiner, hit two breakers. That'll combine it, uh, the two circuits. And then we'll have a number eight from the combiner, which I'll probably mount up here and disconnect over here. And then uh, we'll go back and forth and land it on an 80, uh, an 80, a 40 amp breaker. So stay tuned. Well, this is the fun of getting these bifacial panels with really short leads, real short um, leads off of the J boxes. So what do you got to do? Well, when you figure out where you're setting your microinverters, you got to make a gazillion. Well, I guess we had to make what, 24? 24. 24. It's better than making 48 of them. All right. We're getting these end phases in place. We're out of our element. We are not a grid tie company. But we will do it because it's the same ground mount. And they're not bad, we're just not, we just don't do it every day. But this works for this customer, he'll have no power bill and be happy. 
that's the goal here and uh, we are we've mounted the micros you'll see them flashing their mc4s are plugged in so they're just flashing red saying they've got they're connected to the panels and then we've got our uh, q cable run from one end to the other we have two circuits of 12 these on these iq7 pluses and we've got our terminators or grenades at the end just terminating this circuit of 12 and we got 12 on the top 12 on the bottom and 24 panels and so we'll do some wire management we promise you we will not leave these hanging like this so we're going to clean that up so now we're making male and female connectors connections from the end of the q cable to our raw cable male female connectors there so that we can bring that flat cable into our weather head and then we'll junction up with our number eight wire going to the house so you do not need a disconnect because the when the grid goes down it's automatically disconnected or you turn the breaker off inside several ways to shut it down you have a disconnect outside a breaker inside and so disconnect disconnect not required and uh so we still have to ground the system gonna add a ground bar we've got a ground rod in the ground for it and this little baby box and a little weather head and we should be able to hide all our wires and finish up these connections so all right we're getting there maybe be able to fire this thing up today don't you just love daylight savings time it's just a wonderful thing anyway we're wrapping up trying to wrap up before it gets dark we've got a junction box there a nice trench through here all covered up seeded and strawn strewn strawed and 24 panel array with end phase they should be blinking red right now if they're behaving got enough uh, sunlight to oh there i saw red do you see red there's yeah, they another all, red they all are blinking. they're all blinking waiting for grid got junction we did uh the iq7 pluses and then we went with the raw q cable in through a weather head down into a junction box and then took number eight over to that j box and then transitioned to a romex 1222 which are two circuits going over to the combiner wes is building a map we take the barcodes off of each in inverter and kind of build a little matrix map that you can put into the app. I'm not an in-phase expert, so I'm probably messing that up. And then I can uh, use the Enlighten app to monitor and check the production on each solar panel. Okay, we've passed our inspection. That's always a good, good day. And here's our photovoltaic backfeed breaker, 50 amp, in this Cutler Hammer panel. And we've got it labeled, hopefully labeled correctly, NEC 2020 label kit. And then I'll show you outside where the combiner is and the disconnect. So we'll go out there and it's, it's right out there somewhere. So we just uh, went out. We've got our, you see this 1222 circuit that goes, that's taking our two circuits of end phase out and uh, into the combiner to 20 amp BR breakers in there. It combines it and then we have our uh, connection to our lever disconnect back and forth and then back down in here and landing on this 50 amp breaker. All right, looking forward to them swapping a the meter out and getting this thing turned on. Okay, it's a wrap, past inspection. Um, we've got multiple, we found they had two ground rods already. We added two more to the system, so we're covered there. And you can see where we penetrated the, the brick Good old core bit it keeps coming in handy to get to in and out of through the brick end phase combiner three um it's got room for more circuits so it's pretty simple i'm not used to doing systems as simple as these end phase grid tie but it was a nice break from our normal all right nice clean array again we like having the post driver it just leaves the yard intact and pretty easy to maintain enough height where you can cut the grass Use your weed eater to clean it up. 
and um, everything grows just as well under the array as it does out. Some people mulch. Some people look at putting reflective material because these are bifacial panels, but for the most part, it's that's a lot of extra work that's not required. So the end phases are ready to be turned on. So standard Sinclair fixed tilt ground mount post pounded six feet in the ground. And that's pretty much it. These are Canadian sole. The only thing I messed up on, I didn't realize these leads, they're short, really short on these Canadians and they would not reach the end phase. So we had to make 24 jumpers. So kind of a pain, but that's the way it goes. So it came out nice, I think. What do you think? You want one? We'll get you one. Anyway, if you have any questions or need any help, just uh, let me know. This is Engineer775 signing out. Thank you.